Hola mi gente, Ms. Malcolm Hughes here. Welcome, welcome back. Today I have a very exciting video for you all. I actually did a collaborative review of the book We're Sleeping Girls Live by Farida Abike Eyemide with Udi from It's A Wrap. I hope you all enjoy. Definitely check her channel out. She's a great reviewer, one of the channels I really enjoy. So I was really happy to collaborate with her on this review. So definitely check her channel out and let's get right into it. Today we're gonna to discuss the book We're Sleeping Girls Live by Farida Abike Ayumide. And Udi, do you wanna tell us a little bit of like what the book's about? So the um, We're Sleeping Girls Live follows this character Sade and she's now an orphan pretty much. She's lost her father, her mother, and now she's enrolling in Alfred Noble Prep, this preparatory school. Uh, and her first day there, she meets her roommate, Elizabeth, and then Elizabeth goes missing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And so, so then we're on this journey. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, we're on this journey. That's it. We're on this journey. What happened to Elizabeth? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so it's a wild ride from there. But one thing I do want to point out at the onset is just Farida opens it up with her introduction, saying that she dedicates this book part into women like Toyin. And Toyin is actually short for Olu Watoyin. Um, Salu, who was someone who was Nigerian American. She lived here in Tallahassee, Florida, and she was an active participant in the Black Lives Matter protest during the time. And then one day she tweeted out that she had been sexually assaulted. And then a couple of days after she tweeted that, she ended up going missing. And then subsequently a few days later, she her body was found and she was found deceased. And so what I think she meant, and we see that a little bit in how this plays out is for women and girls who've been assaulted or attacked and had like no safe space and no one to really depend on. And I was thinking through like, did we see this pop up in the book? Because we did see at the time for Toyin, we did see the internet kind of rally behind her and cry for how women aren't protected within not only the Black Lives Matter movement, but just all civil rights and social movements that we've seen. And so it was a more of a cry for like the protection of women while they're on the front lines and just in general. So I just wanted us to think through if you felt like that was something that showed up in our work here and like how that might've influenced how Farida told the story. Yeah, I mean, Elizabeth's character is really close to, to Toyin's yeah. story just in terms of how Shadé's character meets her and then she, disappears um and i don't want to give away the end but <laughs> i mean there is a little bit more hope in in the ending in terms of farida's telling of the story um versus Toyin's actual story yeah. um but a big theme i think in uh where sleeping girls lie is definitely these students having a voice and um, I don't want to like, I, I don't want to get too deep because I know we're going to get into the review, but I'm thinking of specifically yeah. um, Baz or Basil's character mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, how he was just like, I told, no, one's li no one's listening to me, but I know something is wrong. So yeah. And especially Tony being a young person and these are young people, very, yeah. I see a lot of ties. Absolutely. Same. I found it one thing I know we'll talk about some more, but just I found it not really surprising because it happens, but just how much was going on that like adults do knew nothing about. Right. Just like kids often and just thinking back to being a teenager, just like some of the flexibilities or things that you get into and like just adults feel like they're on top of it and they're missing so much. And then like sometimes dire or really traumatic things can happen in that gap between what they think they know versus what's really happening. And I feel like that played out a lot here. And unfortunately in Toyin as well, and just like how many people fall through that gap and adults feel like they're doing enough, but how many um, young folks are actually unprotected. Yeah, and I don't want to compare her first work, Ace of Spades, too much to where Sleepy Girls <laughs> Yeah, but I can't help it. I can't help it when it comes to. We have to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, I do love how she is able to like tie in like institutions mm -hmm. and how like with institutions that there's this that in in trying to like keep up with like tradition traditions or trying to keep the facade that everything is functioning the way it should be functioning, yeah. how much harm it inflicts on people. <laughs> yeah. 
And just how many complicit adults there always yeah, are. Yeah, the complicit. This one more so than the first one, right? Not to compare the two, but this one, yeah, even more so than Ace of Spades. You just had a lot of adults who are willing to like overlook a lot as long as they benefited. So let's start with the pros, right? So like, what did you like about the book? Like, what were your feelings? And we can talk through any questions that you have as well. You're like, what did you like about the book? Yeah, I I did love Sade's character, even though she's just like, I'm, there was the running thing that she was, that she brings bad luck in, in yeah. bad situations everywhere she goes. But I did appreciate like, her ability to navigate like situations especially like in terms of of friendships and like getting information and i just appreciate her as like a sleuth (laughs) (laughs) you don't really get that i don't think you really get that a lot with especially black female characters so the fact that she's like sitting here and like piecing things together i just i i really loved Shadi's character for that and also again comparing it to Ace of Spades like she's able to say things like as they are like she, she there's no like nervousness or anything about it like no <laughs> like her I, I specifically in thinking of her relationship with Jude and mm-hmm. how she navigates that relationship and how she's still quite like almost in like a scary way is able to maintain like I'm not crossing this line with you <laughs> yeah I agree. I think one thing for me was the writing. I liked how we started with the mystery because it's supposed to be like a thriller, right? Like I remember noting the initial line, which is the world was silent when she drowned. I thought that was so good because I had no idea where the story was going to go. I was like, what is what does that mean? Even though I had read the synopsis, but I know you said you really liked Sade's character. Um, <laughs> and I like Sade too. <laughs> But there was parts where I like, I was curious about whether or not, she, eventually it comes out, right? But I was like, whether or not Shade had like a dark history that she was hiding, right? So I like, I found myself wondering like, can I trust Shade like fully? Like, is there something deeper and darker here that she's not like alluding to? Especially when people would come up to her and be like, you look familiar, do I know you? Um, and she's like, you don't know me. And I was like, okay, I'm like, what's the background there? But I agree, just like, yeah, a lot of the different (laughs) characters were interesting. But yeah, Sade, I was giving her a side eye for a little bit, for sure. Yeah, and I will say, like, when we find out Sade's secret, I love how she was able to tie it in, um, Farida, with, like, uh, I don't want to say Nigerian, like, folklore, but, like, those. Yeah, not, like, folklore, but, like, I guess superstitions? Superstition, yeah. Yeah. She was able to tie that in with, like, Nigerian, like, superstition. And I was just like, oh, that's a really nice, way of like folding that in into the story I thought that was a a, a nice touch there was a lot of like different characters and things going on and I did appreciate how it it seemed like every character had like this full story like I didn't feel like anyone got left on the back burner (laughs) I would agree with that I do feel like we have really well thought out and well-rounded characters some I like more and less than others, obviously. Some were surprising. Like, how did you feel about the unholy trinity? Like, did you have any thoughts about them or just the way that she presented them? Like, did it shift throughout the book or did it impact how you read the story? Just like, what was the influence there at all, if any at all? Yeah, so I when we when we initially got the books and um, Fruity was talking about how she was inspired by Mean Girls, I was coming in thinking that they were potentially going to be unredeemable characters um but specifically april how april in the beginning i'm just like oh she has to be like the most terrible person <laughs> <laughs> like she has to be the mastermind behind all of this and the way that her character comes around oh. and how we come to understand why like she navigates the way that she does i thought like april was so within the dynamic of the three of them was so re- well done i'll also say the same for for Persephone because like in the beginning we think that she's very clo- cold and closed off but the way that like we come to learn like her story and like her own experience at the academy or at the preparatory school yeah I just think that they all they, I, in the beginning we I see them I saw them as very like I guess shallow but the way that in, by the mm. end they had so much depth was very yeah I was like she did that <laughs> 
I, I agree. I really ended up really liking Persephone's character. And I thought that I was going to dislike her at the beginning. Just the way she was interacting in the class, I thought she was unnecessarily cold. And then also just the other two girls as well, right? Just the unholy trinity and how they all were together. But Persephone ended up being a favorite of mine. April, honestly, I don't know if I liked her more by the end of the story. I don't. Juliet, I did end up like liking her. I thought they were all well written. But I guess my question for you as well as Pers like Persephone, but then also April, did you see any of their stories playing out the way they did? I felt like there was a little bit of foreshadowing, but you have to be paying attention. But I'm just curious if you picked up on it. Mm, I didn't actually, I was really surprised by the way things turned around for April, even though we kind of knew that Elizabeth and her had, you know, this connection of previously being roommates, but I wasn't very sure how that connection was going to be made like throughout the story. And Persephone, hmm, was I surprised by Persephone or did I have any idea? I don't think I did. I don't think for, I don't think I did for any of them. There was, I think when we get into like part two of the book, like when we get to the end of part one, that's when I was really like, oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting this at all. August. August was one that I wasn't really. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like what we thought was at the beginning was how I feel like it, it kind of rolled out at the end. So <laughs> I don't I don't know if I saw the way it played out for August. That is someone who I know Sade had mixed feelings about him, but I actually like I liked August. Like so the way that things ended up playing out was a little disappointing. Who I never liked was Jude. Um, oh yeah. It's just, you know, some people just like try too hard. And I know he was like the school's golden boy, but it, he was always suspect. I don't know if I saw it going where it went. So yeah, I guess that was, well, I guess we'll talk about it a little bit later if it was effectively done. Because I saw what she was trying to do and I saw what she did. But I think also circling back to what you said about Mean Girls, I felt like the first book had more Mean Girls. This one I ended up saying, hold on. I said that this one reminded me of Pretty Little Liars, Riverdale, and Criminal Minds. Like if you took those three shows and you put them together, I felt like that was this. I think when you said Pretty Little Liars, I was like, oh, that's kind of wild. <laughs> Did you but get like, a gossip girl you. kind of vibe at all? Or <laughs> I huh? guess the first one was more like a gossip girl vibe. I think it's that mm. dark academia-esque, like we're all, yeah. we're in, you know, so, sure. academy that you can't um, really escape but <laughs> No, yeah, but it definitely gave me Pretty Little Liars. And then Riverdale with all of their, like you were saying, sleuthing and trying to figure it out. But all three of those are shows that I love. So I wasn't mad at it in any way. But definitely the dark academia, like you were saying. I will say about that, though, and I don't know if you feel the same. Though I enjoyed this book and I enjoyed the first one, I don't want Farida to end up getting pigeonholed into just like this type of genre. Unless she wants to. But <laughs> I do remember reading this and thinking like, the next book from her, I would like for it to be something different. Yeah, what, what drama would you be interested to see her dibble and dabble in next? Okay, so honestly, maybe a romance book. And I know that's like kind of left field. But because at one point I was scared that she was queer baiting in this book. And I won't say like which characters, but I was like, if nothing happens between these two characters, I'm going to be pissed because she definitely queer baited them the whole time. But then she saw it through. So then it felt organic. And I would like, you know, I think she does a good job of like slow burn and building up the intensity. So I was like, if she dedicated an entire book to that, I would read it. Yeah, I could see it. And then also in this book, I'm also not going to say the, the couple that were, but there was like a couple connections. I was just thought like, is it going to end up going this way or? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think um, there was one that I was just like, this is, this is not going to end. <laughs> I think there's like three that she was like, it could potentially go somewhere, but one of them was definitely not going to go anywhere. But <laughs> mm. Which one? Oh, now I want to know. I'm like, which characters did you not see having a future? I, it's Jude. But <laughs> oh, no, that one for sure. That one for yeah, sure. Dude, but I'm like, yeah, that no future. August. <laughs> you didn't think you could end up with I, I did. I wanted them initially. Like when she first got to the school and they had that organic like connection with swimming, I did want to see it. But once he did that thing without her consent, it kind of like, cause I didn't feel like it was enough chemistry there for that. I was like, hmm, 
I don't know if she invited yeah. that in, you know? So for me, yeah, that kind of put me off August a little bit. Yeah, yeah I, I I agree. But I, and I think initially, like, when they first meet in the pool, I'm just like, oh, okay, maybe <laughs> this is going to be. It was cute. Yeah. It was. And now that, okay, now that is a circle back to Gossip Girl. That did have, like, a little bit of, like, mm, he was giving Nate at first. Remember Nate from Gossip Girl? Like, oh, was, yeah. Like, Nate. He was giving Nate. Yeah. So it was cute at first. It was. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah, but it kind of did give me, uh, at least the dynamic with Sade, Basil, and, you know, Elizabeth from when they were all together. It was kind of giving, like, mean girls in that aspect, like, their relationship. And then Elizabeth had this relationship with April that we don't really know what exactly happened <laughs> that <laughs> that now they're no longer friends and she's like in that it circle and I think that's probably as far as it goes in terms of like how I felt like oh this is kind of giving me girls in the dynamics <laughs> thinking through that like just some of the surprise elements do you feel like you saw Sade's background being what it is or were you like genuinely surprised I was surprised <laughs> And and I, I may have missed like that she alluded to it in the mm -hmm. beginning when she was kind of because in the beginning she kind of talks about her like her family dynamic before she ends up at the at the school. But when it takes the turn that it takes, I was kind of like taken off guard. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> when her when her sister pops up, uh, that sister storyline, I was I was not expecting it. <laughs> I was okay. So I this is probably going to be some spoilers in the video, but um, I was expecting for her to have a relative. I didn't expect for it to be what it was, though, because I remember when she was thinking back on their trip to Paris and the way that she was expressing it, saying like us and the parents were talking. So I was like, oh, there was someone here. Now, I also didn't necessarily connect that to the person or the ghost that kept showing up and like yeah, stalking her. I thought that something, I thought that Sade had, would have had a direct cause in something happening to that person. In this case, she arguably is, but in my mind, it wouldn't have been arguable. It would have been something that was like concrete that Sade had a direct hand in what happened to them. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought, especially because, I mean, granted, I can see how it could still affect you to the fact that you wouldn't ever want to, like, do that activity or whatever was related to that again. But I was, I, I don't know why I was expecting, like, oh, it, it could have been maybe, like, her swim mate or something like that. Um, or, like, <laughs> maybe, like, a relative. <laughs> I thought it was yeah. swim instructor or something. Yeah, and you, yeah. a part, like, uh, they always talk about how she was like really dedicated to swimming, but I, I mean, honestly, I, okay, one because my mind's going multiple places. The first thing is is that I really, <laughs> I really liked all the water metaphors. The one that she said that her sister will always say, like, if you can't like swim, it's okay to like float or I guess like tread water. You know, like just keeping afloat, like that metaphor. I, I was like, ooh, yeah, it it really it, it was something I highlighted. I was like, oh, I really like that metaphor but then number two like in terms of Sade and just her connection to swimming I don't wish there was more <laughs> like I mean granted like the I think some of the like the whole big scene that explains exactly what happened to Elizabeth it does take place in granted there's no water in it but like the pool <laughs> <laughs> and also the big incident with her sister involves like water and swimming, I guess. We like they always bring up like how she was this big swimmer, but I don't really feel like it really like it really goes anywhere in the book. <laughs> Apart from that's where August and, and her meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's a valid point because it, everything is swimming and swimming, like swimmer related with Michael Phelps and all these things. So I do agree. Like, I feel like I wish that Shade would have joined the swim team earlier and we would have gotten to like experience her in that competitive nature of swimming. Right. Even though I do think that Farida did a good job of when Sade was in the water describing how exhilarating and like freeing it felt for her. So I think like in that part, she was very descriptive and did it well. Oh, I really did. I wanted to talk about Sade's dad. <laughs> I'm just looking at a note. <laughs> like, go ahead. Throughout the book, she doesn't like she goes in like a little bit on the dynamics with her with her father. Yeah. And also I may have missed it, but I don't know if it was very clear what exactly happened 
to like I know he passes away and she's all like, oh, he overworked himself or something like that. Yeah. Or is it because of the death of, you know, not only his his wife, which doesn't seem like that also it seems like iffy in the story. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but like the death of his wife and his other daughter mm-hmm. seems to like he just never seems to be the same. But also Chade doesn't seem to very much like her father like <laughs> like there's just a small bit in the book when like she talks about looking down and like her father being there and I was just like oh is he trying to insinuate that her her father's in hell <laughs> like <laughs> uh, that's so interesting because that's not how I read it at all so I I did read it as him dying of like stress and a broken heart but because his two favorite people died like he didn't really rock with Sade at all for whatever reasons. Like, I feel like that was unfair the way that like her entire family was just like, you're the rotten seed. And <laughs> I did like how she rooted that. Like you were saying a Nigerian, like superstition and folklore, of, like there are these twins and like one twin is the one who's the evil twin and how that was just relegated to Sade for whatever reasons. But then like the dad, I just felt like he had his two favorite people the mother and the other sister. And then when they died, he just like kind of tapped out and no longer wanted to like live. But I didn't view it as her like hating her father. I actually feel like she secretly wanted his love. Mm. And so I feel like it was still a yearning. And that's why he was still like popping up and around because she still desired that. Obviously she had a better relationship with her mother, but I very much felt like she wanted the affection from her father as well. Because now I'm thinking, like, points where it felt like, oh, that she really wants that. Her, I mean, there was points, you know, like, when she talks about how, like, she was always home and, <laughs> like, her sister ends up, you know, the whole story of her getting, being able to be the one that goes to, goes away to school while yeah. she's still stuck at the house and, and that dynamic. But also, like, the father, specifically the father and and the mother's relationship. Because in the book, she's all like, well, if only, like, they had known that in the family that mental health was, like, this really big um, issue within the family. But then also, while reading it, it kind of sometimes gave the dynamic that, like, her, the mother and the father didn't have that good of a relationship. So I was like, is it because the father wasn't, or none of them were really like well-versed in like the mother's mental health Mm -hmm. or is it because the father is not a good character? But (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think that's valid. Like you're right in the history of depression. I like how she touched on that. There are some things that I wish she would have expounded on more, but I do like that she included it and touched on like the history they're in and how it looks differently for different folks. But the dad, I don't know. Like I felt like he was someone who was very business driven, even though he loved his family. I don't feel like he prioritized them and that ended up harming like all of them in different ways, including the mom. But I didn't feel like he was like a horrible person. I do feel like he treated Sade horribly. And okay, I might be lying. I might feel like he was kind of a bad person, but mainly because what happened to, what is the other sister's name? Oh, Jamila. Especially with everything that happened to Jamila, I felt like the dad wasn't there. Before she even went away to school, he was like treating both of them unfairly. But I also felt like once she came back, especially after we learned that he knew and he had a foul about it, I feel like as a father, he failed to show up. And when he placed the blame on Sade, I feel like that was horrible when obviously he's not the one who committed it. Like, But I felt like the bigger part of the blame was on him because it didn't seem like he did anything to support her. He just relegated her to her room and expected for Sade to fix the situation. I don't know if you felt the same way, but that was my take. Yeah, and I, I guess that also plays into like the the parental figures not really being the a safe space for you know these characters to like come to and, and voice their like concerns or you know the these traumas that are happening in their lives and you know from the teachers to the parents even thinking of like Elizabeth's parent can we talk about that though because where were the parents okay like <laughs> for real they were only there when things were at the absolute worst that they could be 
But it's like, other than that, where are the, where are the parents? Like, I feel like the teachers and the headmaster had entirely too much control. Yeah, and it's not like they really <laughs> they really did anything <laughs> apart from, like, try to get back to, like, let's get back to the day-to-day. <laughs> like, they weren't really yeah. trying to resolve anything. So it was sad that, they like, it felt like none of them could really go to anybody. <laughs> I know. It was just like, where's the money? As long as we got the money coming in, it's going to be okay. Or that like internal protection for the boys, how, which made me wonder if the headmaster had been a part of the fishermen back in his day. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. I was expecting like a a picture to come up and it's like the headmaster (laughs) in his class. (laughs) That's what I was, that was the plot twist I was expecting. So, like, as the story progressed, like, like we talked about some of the good things we really liked about it. Was there anything for you that you were like, hmm, I could have did without, or I would, you would have, like, preferred had it been written differently? Hmm. I mean, again, like, going back to August's character, I think there was some, like, twist and turn in, in the story. But particularly, like, finding out how August played into all of it. I was like, I don't really feel like it felt like a surprise. At least to me, it didn't feel like a surprise. It kind of, I think it unfolded the way that like we had expected it to un- unfold, which also I guess is, is bringing a question into my head. But first I'm going to let you like, you know, give where you felt like things could have been or it wasn't really a favorite part of, uh, of the book. But just in terms of uh, Elizabeth and Augustus' relationship, <laughs> did you see it unfolding the way that it did unfold? Because that's one thing I kind of wasn't, like, surprised about as well. So, yeah, I just wasn't... August's storyline was probably the, the part of the book that I was just the least... <laughs> In, invested in because I, I kind of the way it happened is the way I saw it happening. Interesting. I don't know if I saw it playing out that way. I was scared that August had a, like a bigger, darker role than he did. Not to say that what he did was light, but I definitely saw it being more just darker. I'll just say that I saw him going to the extreme, and that's not how it played out. But I would say like one thing that really surprised me is the scene with August, Jude, and Elizabeth in the pool area and August's reaction. That felt very inauthentic to me. I didn't believe it for a second. I just didn't see August reacting that way, especially that his relationship with Jude had played out. And just also his dynamic with Elizabeth, the way that their trajectory was going and how he was treating her. I just didn't like feel like it was authentic the way that like that scene played out. Mm, did you see him being a more like cruel in that scene or? No, I felt like he would have been more passive mm. about it. I didn't really see him lashing out in defense the way that he did. Like that was surprising to me, especially I would have expected that. Now, not to give this away, but when the big incident happened, and he like became a part of it, I would expect that that anger to be in that moment opposed to finding out the news. Like it just felt like it would have been more genuine at that time. And like, maybe it's because he found out what he found out that he felt like it was wrong and he had to defend. But I don't know, for me, it just didn't feel like authentic to his character at that point. I also kind of, I guess I also struggle with August because one, it seems like he's trying to, which also is the same for like April's character, I guess, knowing that they come from a background of like, like a well-to-do keeping up with like the Joneses. It seems like they come from a very affluent family and it seems like they, they struggle with trying to save face and trying to like keep up the, the pretenses and, and be part of like the the club, whatever that, <laughs> however you want to take that, be part of the club. While also it seems like August seems to, I, th- I, I do believe that he did have feelings for Elizabeth. Like, I feel like he did, and I feel like when, like, the things unfolded like they did, like, he was hurt, but then also, it's that struggle of also keeping up with the with the pretenses and, like, keeping, you know, the image of whatever status they have. No, yeah, I get that, for sure. I did feel like that was an inner tug he had, or even at that scene where Jude got to swim in the meet when he wanted to, and that's what I think for me that made it like feel inauthentic because I was like, 
there's just been times where we've seen him just allow you to have his way or kind of like not cower, but swallow a lot of emotions when it came to Jude and just be like, okay, it's Jude. It is what it is. So I was like, for him to lash out in that way, I was like, maybe, but I don't know. I just didn't see it that way. And I think another big scene for me that didn't, I won't even say it didn't feel authentic. I just didn't like the way it unfolded. So like how everything ended up coming together with Elizabeth from the moment that everything happens in April's room until the end of the book, I did not like Elizabeth's storyline and the like road she took in the story. I don't know if you felt differently, but I didn't like it. I agree. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad nothing like nothing bad happened, but still like did it have to happen this way? <laughs> like it was a little underwhelming. I was like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, I was all like, girl, this is where you were at the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, that was um it it wasn't a reach because it made sense. One thing I would say about this book is like the things made sense, right? It's just I was like, I don't know if it was the best course of action, or I don't know if it was like worth the payout. That was my issue. I was like, I don't know if like everything that led up to this was worth the big surprise. Yeah, yeah. It did kind of feel just a little I think I'm putting it all on uh, Augustus, but <laughs> I think the reveal of it all was a little. That's so funny because I don't have a beef with August. Like, I don't. I like this character. I just. I know. I could have guessed it. See, that shows how much I don't lie. I was like, I, I know. know. <laughs> That's so funny. So, speaking of that, like, how did you feel about the pacing of the book? Like, all the way through from part one to the last part? Like, how did everything, like, flow for you? Mm, I, and, and I'm not going to lie. In the beginning, I wasn't completely invested. I was like, where is this going? And I will say by like part two of the book, it really picks up. And then <laughs> like, it, it seems like that's when everything kind of happens like back to back to back. So, which I don't mind. I don't mind like a, a kind of like slower, like building up like these characters and the dynamics in the beginning. So I don't mind a slower beginning. But for me, the beginning felt just, just a tinge slow. <laughs> Honestly, I think I feel a little differently because I think as someone who really loves like thrillers and just like what's going to happen, I don't mind a slow build. So I was okay with that. I think part one, I was okay because it was like unfolding. It's like, what happened? You're getting to learn about the characters a little more. Part two, I was still engaged. Part three, though, for me, I was like, that's when I started to realize I wasn't as emotionally invested as I thought I would be. Because as things were starting to just like play out and everything was being revealed, I realized I was like, I don't really care what happens to that person. And I don't think that's like the reaction I should have been having. Yeah. I think for me, it was kind of like, oh man, how is, how are we going to clear Sade's mm. name because it seems like she gets she just gets caught up in like at yeah. first it's like Elizabeth and now this and it's like yeah. oh my gosh how is, yeah. she gonna, how is she gonna clear her name and like get her get out of this because yeah like and then you start second guessing because she is carrying like the secret that's kind of like like you said it's alluded to but we don't actually know what the yeah. secret is and you start to like second guess her as the you know as the the narrator, as the as the main mm. character, like what exactly <laughs> should we should I be trusting everything that she's saying? I think by part three, yeah. I, I just had just a little bit of distrust in Sade, okay. kind of kept me in there too because I'm just all like, so what is what is ac exactly happening here? Um, yeah, how much how much does she actually know that she's not telling us? <laughs> True. Okay. How did you, without like giving too much away, how did you feel about the reveal of who the culprit was, what happened, and why? Like, so for me, I really felt like, though it wasn't unbelievable, it just felt like it came out of left field. And I had a bunch of questions. Like, I had too many questions when it was all said. And then I was like, when did this happen? Because from when, Shade was there to when Shade wasn't there and they returned. How much time had elapsed? 
You know, it was like that part for me felt less believable. No, I agree. It did feel less believable. And it also felt like I, I said that I felt like all the characters had a really good like story and like uh-huh. background. I felt like who ended up how everything ended up folding and how we figure out like what happened. I was just like, I feel like this is the character that we, <laughs> that we saw the lead. Exactly. <laughs> like I would have almost preferred to be anyone else than that character. Cause that just felt, and even the yeah, reason. So, like, yeah. I you're you're just naming all the things that are pointing that I'm just all like, it's August's fault. This is all. Yeah. all these are- <laughs> <laughs> that would be more believable if it would have just been Shade. <laughs> like it was, I don't know. The interactions with the police were always interesting. Like I do like how she tried to like let them play out fully and for us to see how everything was transpiring. But in the end, I don't know. It was just like a disconnect for me because I found myself thinking like, if we weren't going to discuss this book, would I have continued reading it or not? And the answer was, I was like. I don't know. Like, we may never know now because I did. But, like, there was, and I can't pinpoint the exact moment, but there was some point where, like, I just didn't care about the, like, conclusion. Honestly, if we're thinking about, if I was thinking about, like, where it could have, I think the book could have ended and I I would have never known what happened to Elizabeth because I feel like at some point the book became more than Elizabeth. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it became more than Elizabeth. So honestly, I think once like the police are involved and they start pulling people in for for questioning, it's Sade's name is is kind of cleared. I've I've probably been okay with that. <laughs> with that. I don't know. So I guess that leads to like the natural place of like just like your overall impressions of the book, and then like however you want to like rank it, but just like. Yeah, your overall impressions and then walking away from the book like what would be your recommendation for folks hmm my overall impression um and even thinking about like the other books that i've read this year so far I, I i had a good time with this book now that we've been discussing the ending i'm not sure if the ending was my favorite but if i had to rank it like a one to five it's it's like a solid four for me like i had i had a good time if someone is like looking for something that's like a little thrilling i would say oh try this one okay i like it i think for me i think farida is a good writer like never gonna take that away from her i feel like overall it was it kept me engaged for the most part i wanted to know like where is this going but like i said at some point i did kind of like lose at least an emotional connection even though like i was like i'm gonna see this book through i didn't dislike it in that sense but the reward like the end payoff for me was just like eh, not exactly what i wanted so for me like i usually do a scale of like read uh now read when you have time or read when you want or read so i read now read when you have time or read if you want and this for me was like a read when you have time. So for me, that's usually around like a three. Like I don't hate it, but I didn't love it. Like it was cool. There's some other thrillers that I read that are better. I would even say, hate to say it, Ace of Spades was better in my opinion. So this isn't one that I would like rush to recommend, unfortunately. Yeah, no, thinking think about on your scale, I, w- I would also say don't rush to read it, but I don't think you would be like, completely disappointed <laughs> yeah. you if you're ready like you can't um, read it right yeah it would be a good read but uh i i think it's definitely like it, for me i love some good like i love some good character development and mm-hmm. i just feel like she really gave these these characters like like I felt like I, I knew who they were um, For sure. and they kind For of lived sure. off the page. I don't think the pacing of it was, was bad either. Like I, yeah, I was engaged when I was engaged, I was really engaged. Did we really talk about how she, she touched on, on essay in, in this book? No, um, we didn't do it enough. Let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I, I think that she, I was specifically when I was reading this, I was thinking of, um, I don't know if you read the list. Mm-mm. But, but I've heard of uh, it. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking of like how the how which comparing how they both touch kind of like the same subject, and I, I think this is a lot more well done, <laughs> just in terms of like the way it it navigates like the 
it, the perspective of like the victim and how it's not, it doesn't seem to be very like individualized. It's also like how the, the, the perpetrators are protected by, you know, like in this case, like the school, like these systems, these like thoughts, you know, how our perceptions, I think of our, the way that we perceived April, some of these characters who ended up like, you know, we ended up learning how they're kind of implicated or affected by this as well, that it, it becomes more than just, you know, the perpetrator and the victim, but also this like community or this or this space that breeds, you know, and protects this kind of behavior. I would agree. I do think the way that she depicted how it's institutionalized, how it's something that goes on across time, like the lineage and legacy of it and how it's just how it doesn't also doesn't die, right? Because even when it was stopped, it just took another shape and another form. And so I really, really actually did like her depiction of just like how unsafe you feel, how unheard you feel, and how it happens in so many different ways, right? So even if you take the situation of Persephone, right, that, that living threat and how just the threat of it made her feel unsafe and having to live with that as opposed to someone like April, who was so indoctrinated within that culture and how she handled it, which was much different than how some other folks handled it and how she found her own way to kind of like rage against it. But in the end, she was still just suffering. And so I really was curious, how did you feel about where Sade's and April's relationship ended up in the end? Because for me, it felt like, one, I don't think what Sade like, said was as bad as how Sade felt it was. I felt like it came from like a genuine place and I felt like April needed a support system, but she also didn't know how to interact with that. So I wish that their dynamic could have played out differently. I think I appreciated, one thing I appreciate about like April's character and when Sade like brought that situation up to her or create that space to like have that yeah. conversation that we got the perspective of, of like, cause everybody else was like, I, I, this happened to me. Well, okay. Maybe Persephone, it may be a little bit different, but, yeah. <laughs> but like this happened to me. I, 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 I'm in this space where I feel like I'm not being heard versus it seems like April is, is doesn't want to acknowledge it. She just wants to like move on. She just wants to be able to like function without having to like acknowledge or, or confront that. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that she gave like that perspective because especially like when we think of like the climate now of what we are talking, especially like in, you know, like in pop culture and like the public eye and like this critique of like, why don't people come forward and things like that. And like just thinking of April's character and how like, she's like the head of this like in girl crowd. And she seems to be like this, almost like this figure, I don't want to say a power, but in order to like keep like pushing forward like what she has to suppress <laughs> and i think that makes that made her, her character or their dynamic interesting is what i'm trying to mm -hmm. say that i like appreciated that <laughs> because it gave a different that. you know view Perspective. Of, yeah because not everyone responds the same or deals with trauma the same way so i agree i wasn't mad at it if like again it felt realistic but like I just wanted them to have, I wish they could have had a better resolution and more healing could have occurred because, and it's maybe it's not fair for me to say this, but in some way I did feel like April failed Elizabeth. And like, obviously she was dealing with her own like traumas that she hadn't discussed, but, and maybe that's not unfair because I feel like she chose her brother over, she chose, well, she chose Jude and Augustus over, and now you got me calling him Augustus, but she chose Jude. <laughs> And August, I feel like over Elizabeth. And so that conversation there as well of just her role in all of it is like being in that system, but then also like women showing up for women. So April for me was probably the most, con no, not the most controversial character of all of them, but of like the girl characters, she was the one for me that I was felt most conflicted about. Mm, and I feel like if everything had came out like, with her brother and everything. Also the way that it would have like maybe upended her 
And it's, mm. I felt like it was also her kind of trying to protect like some sense of yeah. yeah when you in, and from the outside you think everything is perfect everything is normal everything is going right and then when you realize like there's all this stuff going on that she's trying to like hold together the sense of which which is when we're talking about like the headmaster and like all these yeah these, um, these adult characters trying to keep this normalcy but it's also like you know if if august is found out if all these things happen how is she also like uprooted from whatever she's trying to hold yeah. on to. <laughs> yeah, and I, but honestly, April's the 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 big surprise for April didn't surprise me. She was really, too, yeah, because she was too despondent when everything was happening. So I was like, something's up with her. Like her connection to Elizabeth surprised me um, when we got the reveal on that. But like her relationship with her ex and what she was hiding and holding, I saw that coming. Like I I did see that coming. Yeah, um, I was so because I'm specifically thinking of like when we get this the background of the breakdown Elizabeth in her relationship, and when Elizabeth before everything you know falls apart between them when she confronts yeah. April. I was I was surprised actually. I'm not gonna lie. I was granted. I'm trying to like say like oh April's not surprising, but I was surprised by okay. her reaction of yeah. of being like girl <laughs> pretty much you're a liar i'm so <laughs> yeah that was wild that was wild yeah for it to just be that was interesting yeah so for me i was like she was kind of the most um i felt conflicted about her in the end also another scene like just totally random but this kind of bothered me because i felt like she was being like farida was being so intentional in the way that she was writing these characters and trying to write care and how they were showing up and persistence. But there was one scene, I don't know if you remember when Baz was in his room and he was talking about how defeated he felt and how he just wanted to give up on everything. And Shade was like, oh, okay, so you want to be alone? And she just left him there. I remember reading that like, is he not here sounding like he wants to like unalive himself? And she's just like, yes, oh, okay, okay no, I got that too. I was very, yeah. Yeah. I remember reading that being like, what? Like, okay. So, yeah. I'm just making sure I didn't miss that. Oh. No, I agree. Um, but I also, <laughs> yeah, that was wild. <laughs> oh, I was like, Farida, I just felt like, I was like, maybe that's me being overly sensitive. But I just felt like Shade dropped the ball in that moment. Yeah, I, I felt that like a, a, a couple of times where it seemed like Baz or or, or Basil Basil needed yeah. more like support, and Shade yeah. was kind of like, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, you figure it out. Um, yeah, yeah. It was interesting for sure. But to circle back to what you were saying, I do feel as if this book is very timely because I do remember in my notes referencing like a specific music mogul. And um, just I was saying like what happens when boys go unchecked and the type of men they can grow up and be. So I felt like this is something that like it's not new. Right. That's something that we know happens in every economic level of life. But I felt like this was we just need more stories that highlight that lived experience as well and how ingrained it is in our culture that so many people allow it to just happen like how many levels of protection there are in place as well that allow it um because even miss miss blackburn yes who, i was thinking of her when you were saying what you're saying yeah yeah like just her character i feel like she got a hero's journey and i don't think she deserved it i don't know if you felt that way but just because of how she was throughout the story and then for her to now, granted, there was evidence of this or just hints that maybe she didn't approve of how things were going and she was going along to get along. But I felt like she got a little too much grace in the end for how she just swooped in and was kind of like the saving force for like our main character. And that like kind of really annoyed me. I don't know if you felt the same way. Um, I don't know if I was particularly annoyed, but when she like, comes in at the end and she makes it seem like that she was like that she was vigilant and she <laughs> had been seeing what's been going on this whole time and it's kind of like I, I I don't I I didn't really like get that vibe while reading it it seemed like that she was very complicit <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. there was no shining moments where you felt like, oh, maybe she's just trying to like maybe hold on to her 
job or something. Her ending like, didn't match. Yeah, her actions throughout the right throughout the book. Her story throughout. Maybe um, when like that sure. one time she takes them out into into the town, but <laughs> that's me giving grace. <laughs> Right, exactly. He's just getting all the grace. I guess another scene, the last scene that I felt like, I don't know if you felt like it was useful. For me, it was like more, um, I reflect on it. And at the time when I was reading it, I thought that it was impactful and I thought it may have been important to the entire overarching story. But like when I got to the end, I felt like it was pointless. And it was when they went into town and went to the internet cafe and the exchange there. I was like, was it just to demonstrate the levels of perversion because of what the guy was saying about Elizabeth? But I thought that that cafe story would end up having a bigger connection to how everything came together. And it kind of was for not. Yeah, there's really nothing, nothing that actually connected to it. <laughs> now that I'm thinking, yeah, there's nothing that really connected to it except for like change of scenery. <laughs> <laughs> For us just to see the town and experience for us it. to see the town, yeah. Because what, the yeah. only time they really leave the school is like when Sade goes to London and yeah. they go into town. Like, they go into town, like, what, twice? But, yeah, yeah both times they go into town, but I don't think we really get anything from it. <laughs> no. And how did you, so I, we never really touched on it, but how did you feel about Jude's courting of Sade? Yeah, the whole time, honestly, I was like, clutching my pearls like it just gave mm. like something every time you're you're reading their scene you're afraid something especially when they're alone you're afraid something's gonna happen which is I'm gonna give a kudos because I don't know if you had the same feeling every time you read their scenes like yeah. and you read like the way dude comes off the page like he, com he comes off creepy <laughs> um yeah. Yeah, he comes off creepy. The way that she describes the way that like Jude stares at her and like the way people talk like a, like about Jude. So when they're in scenes together, it's you're kind of like, is oh my gosh, is something going to happen in the scene between the two of them? And I'm going to when every when things hit the like hit ahead between the both of them. I was like, was there a moment where I like, oh, before when every when everything is like happening, is there a moment where Jube does kind of seem just a little bit like redeemable when he's speaking with like a, a drunken mind or in I don't, I don't even want to say drunken. Is it drunken, inebriated? Some he's on something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> redeemable I don't know because I think at one point I did feel as if Jude might have been redeemable until I found out Sade's history and the backstory they're in and for me it was just like I was all hands off with Jude because we just realized the level of monstrosity that he was that just yeah I don't know did that how did that feel to you did that feel authentic did that make sense to you how it all ended up coming together in that sense connection across Sade's life or did did it not? I think I think once like in that scene uh, with Jude and Sade, like right before it, it hits the fan, and he kind of like, well, he ends up like saying a name that I think kind of then pieces it together, and then also it kind of I think that scene explains like the way that he like looks at Sade but then also if anything maybe and now I'm saying this I'm like oh it might make Jude look worse because he you would think that he would be all he would say like girl I, like you're you're her like you're <laughs> like we were intimate right? together you're her <laughs> yeah. for sure like I thought that was interesting because of how it's not like they're distant cousins or something, right? So there's a stark resemblance. So for me, I was just always like, if it was that intense between them, like you obviously, there's obviously a resemblance or there should be, right? So like, how do you let this progress without before that moment in that inebriated or whatever state, how do you not before that moment, like you were saying, like call her out and be like, I know it's you. Like, why are you lying? I don't know. It was it was weird. Yeah, and that says like that's also kind of sad because it's like it's like okay, so <laughs> like for all the people that kind of came up and be like, I remember you. 
I'm just interested in the kind of relationships that like her sister has. <laughs> it's like when somebody be all like, oh, so and so, hey. Yeah. <laughs> like, and be like, oh, sorry, that's not me. Yeah. <laughs> not like, oh, you look familiar. <laughs> true. Very true. So I don't know. It seems as if in the description, it seems as if she had a like a well rounded social life and like things were going well before the big event. So I don't know. I think I agree with you that I really like the characters and that none of them were static and they were always evolving and growing. But then to step back and like we were just identifying, there was still some like flaws. And I don't know if those are character flaws or just like oversights on their end of just some things there was a bit of a disconnect. But overall, I still thought it came together pretty well. And I'm not mad that I read it. Yeah, I think it's definitely, I don't know if I would forget that I read this, which is why I'm like, it's probably like more than the three for me, because I would probably, I would still like at the end of the year, put this in the better half of books I read this year. But <laughs> yeah, like, I don't think it, it was, I don't think it was forgettable. There's some things I probably would still think about later as I sit with it more. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm not mad at that. I could see that. I don't know. I was trying to think of, I was thinking halfway through the books that I've read this year. I think this might be one of the more forgettable ones for me. I think that um, the plot line, the storyline, I think the importance of it, like, but as far as like, if it'll stick with me, probably not, unfortunately. Mm, that just means I need to, to up my my selection because I, I no. so far here it's been a little bit questionable. I mean, you know, some writers they just write and like it haunts you, you know. Like I think yeah, of um <laughs> The Street by Ann Petrie. The ending of that book book still haunts me to this day. I'm like, dang, why did it have to turn out that way? Ooh, that's and, on my list. That's on my is list. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So for this one, like I said, by the time I got to the end, I was like, Okay, I guess. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so and I yeah. think I read this like the previous month had I think the previous month in terms of reads weren't there were that was a forgettable month in terms of reads. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think this book put me in a slump, but <laughs> not for sure. It did not do that. It did not do that, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that. So I'm just like, it'll probably one of the memorable ones because it's like, okay, it kind of reinvigorated me to not give up on reading for another two months. <laughs> you know, yes. Uh, so I'm glad that it worked out in that sense then, for sure. I know that like we just wrapped up this, but like, what else are you reading right now? I'm currently reading Family Meal by hmm. Brian Walker. Washington. It's definitely a lot slower and it's more like it's more like in verse. I can't even describe it. It's like a mix between verse and prose. I'm in the middle of that one. The judgment is still out on whether or not I'm in love or not. Yeah, yeah. I finished home. I finally I've been trying to go and read back like classics that I just kind of like like Miss, skipped yeah. over it's never really touched i'm putting home going in classic territory so i, f I finished okay. home going that so long ago and i was just like why did i wait so long? <laughs> <laughs> i've heard good things about it i haven't gotten to it yet but that's good to hear yeah no i was like why did i wait so long it was it was really good and uh i was surprised i actually like sped through it the way i did but uh okay. I, I was like oh okay i get why people it's good when you read something that's like hyped and you I, I, and you get it, but <laughs> yeah, for sure. sometimes you're like, why is everyone raving? But it is really nice when you read it and you're like, oh, I see. I get it. Yeah. Like I see. I understand. <laughs> yep. That's yeah. how I feel about. Um, so one of the books I'm reading right now is this, this one before I let go. And I feel like everyone always only has good things to say about this one. And I'm like a good way through. And I was like, I'm, I'm not done yet. So I want to hold judgment, but I'm just like, Okay, like I, I get it. I think I get it. Like why everyone loves it. So we'll see where it ends up like going. Yeah, like, I actually I read before I let go, and I like I appreciated it, but I was like, I don't think Ooh. this is for me. But <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I have a spicy take. But honestly, while I was like doing the review for it, I was like, I'm talking yeah. about it so much. I think I like it more than. I <laughs> Like the way I'm dissecting this book, I obviously I yeah. think I might like this more than <laughs> it obviously makes me feel something exactly. So we'll see, but yeah, that's our yeah. take 
on What's Sleeping Girls Live. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about it with me. It's been a lovely experience and just like getting to know you and such um, and hanging out. So that's been cool. So thank you. Yeah. Um, the good discussion. I appreciated your thoughts, our thoughts on We're Sleeping yeah. Girls Live. <laughs> Yeah, you changed my you changed my mind on a couple things. <laughs> uh oh, uh, for the better. Sometimes I wonder if I'm overly critical. Um, I was like, I do want people to like support these writers, but I also want our writers to be like putting forth the strongest work. Yeah, no, I think I think it was fair. It was it was fair. At least you know I didn't write it, but I know you know you're an artist. You're sensitive about your stuff, but <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is an unfair question for you, but uh, Ace of Spades or Where Sleeping Girls Lie? Ooh, this is a tough one. <laughs> and I read them very close to each other, so <laughs> I'm going to have to say Ace of Spades. I'm going to have to say uh, Ace of Spades. No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Even though oh, yeah. um, Ace of Spades, is it is it Davon? Devin? Devin. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, his character, I was just all like, oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Why? He was just having the worst time. I was like, what did he do to deserve oh, this? He was just minding his sure. business. <laughs> I guess in both cases, though, I do appreciate that she tried to cover like serious and important topics that need to be discussed. And so, and I like the fact that she does it in a school setting because that's something everyone can relate to. And we've all experienced it. So, Go her. Like, I appreciate that it's like, it's considered YA, but um, yeah. cause sometimes when I read out A, I'm just all like, who <laughs> is this for a young adult audience? Or <laughs> mm. <laughs> like sometimes you read it, so and, like it feels like it's not actually for, like, I feel like a young adult could read this and still enjoy this. I feel like an older person sure. could read it and still enjoy it. it. Still enjoy it. Um, for sure. Yeah, but sometimes I feel like I don't know if this is really for YA. And then sometimes mm. I read it and I'm just all like my my hot take is sometimes I read it and I'm just like it feels like you're reading thinking it's for YA, but it's not actually <laughs> it might actually be for YA. This one does feel like everyone could enjoy it. YA or like true adult, I felt like could enjoy it. So that is a good take. <laughs> <laughs>